So we are back in Visual Studio and I have created a project called Shape Matching. This is a .NET Core console project and then installed the OpenCV Sharp library from the NuGet site and imported the OpenCV Sharp namespace in this classes page. And here inside the main method, the first thing we do is to get hold of our boomerang.png shape, which is the reference image actually. And the code on line 12 is just for grabbing the shapes image inside which we are going to look for the boomerang shape. And on this line 14, I just extract the reference image contour, i.e. the boomerang shapes contour using a method called get ref contour, feeding it the img1 as the parameter. And it's here, this get ref contour method. It takes a parameter of math type and then actually it uses the get all contours method using this image as the input. This get all contours method you should be familiar with because we used it before in the last section when we did the contour detection project. In the presentation I explained that in the reference image we might not have only the boomerang shapes contour, we might also be getting the frame boundary as a contour. So in order to eliminate that, I get all the contours. Probably there's going to be two contours in this image. And I just loop over the contours and eliminate the possible outside boundary. How? I first calculate as I loop over the contours, contour area. We have a contour area method which takes the contour as input and gives us the area of the contour. This is the image's height and width to calculate the complete area of the image frame. And then I find the ratio by dividing our contours area by the image area, complete area. And then use that as a threshold. If ratio is over more than 10% of the whole image or less than 80% of the whole image, then I return that contour as my reference contour. So if your shape, reference shape is so small inside an image, you could change these parameters accordingly. So I happen to get my uh, boomerang shapes contour with these threshold values. And here on line 16, I get all the possible contours in my input image, just like we did in the first section. In fact, I am using the same method here as before. I then define a closest contour variable of pointer ray type. This will hold my closest contour to the reference contour during iteration loop. I then enter a for each loop iterating over the contours in the input image. What I do inside the loop is to use the match shapes method of the OpenCV and feed into this method the reference contour and the current contour in the list. Other than these two contour objects, this method also needs the type of algorithm that we want to use for shape matching. I have used the i3 type. There are two other algorithms by the name of i1 and i2, which you can also use. These all use contour moments for comparison in one way or another. You should choose the one that suits your application the best by trial and error. Perhaps for certain type of shapes, you'll find that one is better suited than the other. This method returns a double number, which is a measure of the match or similarity or closeness of two contours. And when the value of red gets greater, the similarity between the shapes gets bigger as well. We therefore need to find the largest red value amongst the four values for which we use an if clause here and update the closest contour variable accordingly. In the end, we find a contour which has the, the largest similarity index with our reference contour. And then we draw the contour on the shape and then display the image. Well, as you can see, this is our reference image. This is our input image showing all the shapes 
in the input image and here is our output image. As you can see, the only contour that has been singled out is a shape which looks like our boomerang shape. So we have successfully implemented this shape matching project.